Thank you for watching this video. I have some good news that I want to share with you. I think it's the best news you'll ever hear. It was for me. It was the best news I found that I've ever heard. It's about eternal life. What happens after we take our last breath? It's in the Word of God. That's how I know it's true. That's how I know it's good. I'd like to share with you what God said. It won't take long, and I trust you'll listen, and you will be blessed by the message of God's Word. Here's the good news. You can know for sure that you're going to heaven. Many people think they can know, and I thought that too one time. How can I know for sure? Then someone showed me in the scripture, in the Bible, and I read it for myself. And if you were here, I could show you the same thing. In the Bible, you could read it for yourself also. So I would encourage you to grab a pen and a pad and write down the scripture references. And you can look it up later, and you can read it in the Bible for yourself. You'll have God's word for it and not my word. I wouldn't want you to take my word. I wouldn't want that. But God said it and he recorded in his word. You can look it up. Here's a first scripture reference. 1 John 5, chapter 5. And 1 John is close to the end of the Bible, close to the book of Revelation. It's 1 John, 2 John, 3 John. In 1 John chapter 5, verses 12 and 13, and you can include verse 11 in that also. But verse 12 and 13 says this. He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you, that ye may know that you have eternal life. If you have Jesus Christ, you have life. You have eternal life. If you don't have Jesus Christ, you don't have eternal life. It's as simple as that. And I wondered, why do I need Jesus Christ? And if I need him, how do I get him? And then the rest of it unfolded as I was showing these scriptures one time in my life. And I'll share them with you. The next scripture is Romans chapter 3 and verse 23. This is what it says. All have sinned and come short of God's glory. Everyone has sinned. We've all sinned. All means all. That's all all means. All have sinned. We're sinners from Adam and Eve. We missed the mark. We missed the goal that God set. We can't hit it. And we're sinners from Adam and Eve. They missed it too. And we inherited sin from them. And we say, what is so bad about Adam and Eve's sin? They ate of the tree that God said they weren't supposed to. They had a lifetime vacation in the Garden of Eden. And God said, you have everything you want, but don't eat from this tree. And they did. They got hungry and they thought the fruit looks good. So they tried it. What's so bad about that? Here's what's wrong with that. The created one exalted themselves above the creator, the one that made them. God made Adam out of the dust of the earth. He made Eve from a rib from Adam's side. And God, the Creator, told them instructions not to eat of that tree, and they exalted themselves, the created one, above God. They did what they wanted to do rather than what the Creator wanted them to do. And that's what was so severe. And we do that today. Well, that's the condition of our sin. We would have our way we would want to do things our way. We want to lie, probably cheat. It's only a little bit. It's not bad. But it's contrary to God's instructions. His commandments, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not lie. Thou shalt not covet. Thou shalt not be proud and boastful. Thou shalt not steal. And we think the little things don't matter. And it seems insignificant because of our mindset through the years. But we exalt ourselves of God. And that's where the sin comes in. And that's why we can't go to heaven with our sin. That's the dilemma. Now the next verse, Romans 6.23 tells us we can't go to heaven 
with our sin. It says the wages for sin is death. Adam and Eve died. God said they would die when they disobeyed. The wages for sin is death or eternal separation from God, which is hell. So because of our sin, unforgiven, that's our wages. When we die, we step up to the hell's gates and say, give me my wages, give me hell, I'm a sinner. That's what it amounts to. But here is the good news. I can't wait to get to the good news, and here it is. In that same verse, Romans 6, 23, the wages of sin is death. But, the biggest but in the Bible for me, there's a lot of buts in the Bible, and I'm not sure that the word but, B-U-T, is not my favorite word in the Bible. Some places it says, but is a very important word. And we'll run into another one before we're through, another but. But this but, but the gift of God, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ the Lord. Isn't that good news? <laughs> the gift of God is eternal life. Now notice, that scripture doesn't say a gift from God is eternal life. It says the gift of God, that's God himself. God himself is eternal life. And he offers that to you and me freely. It's a gift. A gift can't be purchased. It can't be bought. And it can't be worked for. It would be wages or it would be a purchase. A gift is absolutely free. You can identify with that at Christmas when you get a Christmas gift. It's free. Somebody else paid for it. And Jesus Christ paid for your eternal life and mine. And here's the bottom line of that verse. Heaven is free. Jesus Christ paid for your heaven and mine. And the next verse is Romans 5, chapter 5 and verse 8. It says, while we were yet sinners, God directed his love towards us. That while we were yet sinners, Christ died for our sins. 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ came to this earth amongst the people that he created. And we go back to Genesis and we see that. God said, let us make man in our own image. Jesus Christ and the Father helped to create. Together they created man in their own image. And when we look at that, Jesus Christ died on earth for the people that he created. He came down amongst those people that he created. He left them cut down a tree that he grew he planted a tree, watered it with his rain, warmed it with the sunlight, knowing all the time that man, the people he created, is going to cut that down. After they beat his son, Jesus Christ, put a crown of thorns on his head, plucked out his beard, punched him and slapped him, mocked him, hissed at him, all kind of things, whipped him, and he drove nails through his hands and his feet. And if you saw the movie, The Passion of the Christ, you'll get an idea of what Jesus went through from the people that he created. He gave his life, his blood, and his soul for your heaven, for my heaven, for your sins and my sins. You may think, well, my sins aren't too severe. That was pretty severe payment. It wasn't only the sins that Jesus died for. It was the penalty of the sins. It was hell. He took your hell. And he paid for your hell. You don't have to go to hell. Because Jesus paid for your ransom. He paid for you to be redeemed. If you had a great offense against you, a crime that was so severe you couldn't pay the penalty, whether it was in dollars and cents or with your life, it was impossible for you to pay it. Someone stepped up and said, I'll take your payment. I'll do that time. I'll make that payment. That's what Jesus did for us. When he went to the cross, 
He said, I paid for your sins. I paid for his sins. All the sins. And the penalty of her sin, he paid for. And it's absolutely free. Absolutely free. Jesus paid it all. And I know you're wondering, if it's free, how do I get it? In John chapter 1 and verse 12 says, As many as receive him, to them he gives the power to become the sons, the daughters, or the children of God, to them that believe on his name. So if you receive him by faith, he will save you from hell. He'll forgive you of your sins. He'll make you a child of God. He'll write your name in heaven. He'll give you eternal life. He'll make you part of his family. A child of God. You have to be a part of the family. You're a family in God's family. You're part of God's family by receiving Jesus Christ as your Savior by faith. Believing that he died for you. He died for your sins. He died for your hell. And if you're like me, you're thinking, just how do I do that? How do I receive him? And God made it easy. I'm glad he did. So I could understand it. And I could do it. And I'll read that to you in Romans. Another verse in Romans. In chapter 10. And there's a point here I'd like to make. As we read this. Romans chapter 10. Verses 9 and 10 says this. If thou wilt confess with thy mouth. The Lord Jesus. And believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead. Here it is. Thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And verse 13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So if you call the name of the Lord by prayer, simply talking to God, and telling him you believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. You believe he rose from the grave alive that you may be saved. He asked him to forgive you of your sins and save you. And he'll do it. You believe that in your heart and you confess that to God. And he'll give you salvation. He'll do that immediately. Let's look at this verse a little closer. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. Lord signifies almighty, all supreme, all powerful, over everything. When you admit that Jesus Christ is Lord over all and you're confessing that he died for you, you're saying in effect, I'm surrendering my will to his will I come under him. I'm submitting to Jesus Christ who is Lord. Not like Adam and Eve, not like I've done in the past. I want my will and my way above God's way. The Lord Jesus, he is Lord. He is almighty and he's everything. And I confess that. I confess I can't go to heaven myself. I can't save myself. I'm not good enough to go to heaven the way I am. But Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ, made the way and by confessing that to him and receiving him as your savior by faith he'll save you and I'm going to invite you to pray with me right now a simple prayer to God confessing that and this will be your prayer from your heart to God's heart if you were here and you'd had questions to ask that would be great we could communicate if you had any questions. But trust me. Pray along with me. I invite you to pray with me. It'll be your prayer from your heart to God's heart. The prayer won't save you. The words won't save you. It's just me helping you to talk to God. And it'll be your prayer. So pray this with me. And God will hear you. Dear God in heaven, I confess to you that I'm a sinner. And I can't save myself. I'm not good enough for heaven. Dear God, I believe the Lord Jesus died on the cross for my sins. 
I believe he rose from the grave alive that I may be saved. And Jesus, I ask you right now, forgive me of all my sins, every one of them, and save me. Save me from hell right now. I receive your free gift of eternal life. And Lord Jesus, right now, I accept you and receive you as my personal Savior. And I thank you for hearing my prayer. Amen. If you prayed that prayer with me, and I trust you did, I want to ask you a question. Did you mean what you prayed? And I'm sure you did. If you didn't pray, if you want to pray by yourself, you want to pray in your own words, that's fine. Tell, tell that to God, just as though you're talking to someone in the room. I prayed at one time with a young lady, and I asked her if she meant what she prayed. And she said, well, no, it was your prayer. And I realized I was interrupting in her conversation to God. So I asked her to pray it again herself, and she did. It was her prayer. If you want to do that, if I interrupted your conversation with God, pray it again. Pray anything in that manner, and God will hear you. Tell him you're a sinner. You, want, you don't want to go to hell. And ask him to save you and forgive your sins. And he'll do that. And when you mean it, you pray that and you mean it. This is some more good news. You meant what you said to God, and God meant what he said to you. Remember the greatest verse in the whole Bible, John 3, chapter 3, and verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him, watch this, you shall not perish, number one. Number two, you have eternal life, everlasting life. Why? Because you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross. That's what saved you. Your faith in Jesus Christ and what he did. And here's some more good news. John chapter 10 and verse 28 and 29. This is a great pair of verses. This is Jesus talking. And Jesus said, I give unto them eternal life. And they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father who gave them to me is greater than all. And no one is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Let's say that another way. This won't be changing the, the scripture any. Let's make it personal. Jesus is saying, I gave unto them eternal life. He could say, I gave unto you eternal life and you shall never perish. But let's go one step further, and let's put our name in there. Whatever your name is, put it in there. I'll put my name in there. My name is Bill. And I'll say my name in that prayer as though it's personal for me. Jesus said, I gave unto Bill eternal life, and Bill shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck Bill out of my hand. My Father who gave Bill to me is greater than all, and no one is able to pluck Bill out of my Father's hand. Isn't that great news? What a great promise. What a great promise. Another good verse, John 5, 24. Chapter 5 and verse 24. Jesus said, Truly, truly, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed, watch this, from death unto life. My friends, you won't see spiritual death, you may see physical death, but from this physical body you go to everlasting life. Why? Because you trusted in what Jesus said, that you could trust Him, you could trust Him to save you because he died for you. That's why he could give you eternal life, because he's the one that paid for it. 
And he's the one authorized to give it to you. And he's the one that gave a great price for your salvation to save you from hell. And he's not going to let anybody, the devil or nobody, snatch you out of his hand because he loves you. He paid a great, great price for you. Gave his life, his soul, and his blood for you, for me. He wants us in heaven more than anything in the world. But because we're born in sin, because we're sinners, sin can't enter heaven. But he wants us there, so he had a plan. He made a plan for you and I to be in heaven. God wants to enjoy what he created. He wants to enjoy your smile, your personality. You're special to him. He wants to enjoy that forever. He wants to hear your voice singing praises forever unto his name because you have been redeemed from a devil's hell. Oh, my friend. I hope and trust that you trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior today. Because thinking back, I think the worst thing about hell is forever. There's no turning back. There's no higher court to go to when you pass from this life into hell. It is so sad, and heaven is free, and God loves you enough to die for you. What other God would do that? Most other religions, you got to die for your God. But here, our God died for you. That's what makes it special. He not only died for us, but he rose again. He rose again alive from the grave. And if you're wondering where heaven is at, what heaven is like, let me just give you a glimpse. This is all I know about heaven. And Jesus said it. He gives us a glimpse. I'll share it with you in John 14, chapter 14. Jesus said this, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions, many rooms. If we're not so, I would have told you. I go, Jesus said, to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a, place, prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Now notice this. Jesus said, Jesus said that where I am, there you may be also. Where Jesus is, is heaven. I don't know what all that is what all that encompasses. But where Jesus is, if it's good enough for Jesus, it's good enough for us. Because Jesus is there. Where Jesus is, that's heaven. And here's another thought. He said, I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go, I will come again. I will come back and receive you unto myself. Friends, Jesus is coming someday. Coming in the air. Gravity is going to escape us. Those that trusted in Jesus Christ to save them. Gravity will escape us and we'll be caught up, the Bible says, and meet the Lord Jesus in the air. And another good part, it says, and so shall we ever be with him. Ah, oh, my friend, what good news. What good news. Tell your friends about it. Don't go to heaven alone. Tell your friends. Tell them they can do the same thing you did. And if you want to, you can call in to the website that you're logged on to there, and we'll send you brochures. Here's a great brochure. It says, a simple plan of God, God's simple plan of salvation. The reason it's simple is because it's not complicated. <laughs> do I need to be saved? Can I be saved? And how can I be saved? Short explanation for each one. Most of all, it has Bible verses to go along with the topic. You have the Bible to go by. And you can give that to a friend. Show that to your friend. And introduce them to Jesus Christ. And you can read it together with them. Tell them what happened to you. You know, the Bible, there was a man, when he got saved and Jesus uh, saved him, Jesus said, go back to your hometown 
your household and tell what great things God did for you. That was easy. He didn't have any schooling. He didn't have a Bible to go by. He just did what Jesus told him. Jesus saved him, healed him, and he went back and told what Jesus did for him. And when Jesus came back, the whole town was waiting to see Jesus because of this fellow that told him about it. So you can do the same thing. And call in, we'll send you these. And here's another good point. How to find a good church. Look for a good church. And there's some good suggestions in here. And uh, what a good church should, should look like. And find a church that preaches from the Bible. Find a church that uh, preaches what you just heard. How you can go to heaven. And find a church that's interested in telling people how to go to heaven. And you'll have a right church. you have a good church. A new beginning now that you were born again born of God you started a new life and there's some good thoughts in this spiritual food read the Bible God's word that's food for your soul food for your spiritual growth and that's good and spiritual conversation with God pray with God talk to God every day tell him whatever's on your mind he'll hear you he loves to hear your voice and Spiritual family. Find a good church and people that can pray for you and with you. So how to find a good church? Look for one. And a new beginning. You may think that you'll be perfect after you trust Christ. No more sinning, no more getting angry or whatever. But that's not true. We still have our sin nature. But we're forgiven of that. And one of the things about Verse 1, John 1, 12, to as many as received him, to them he gives the power to become the children of God. That power is available to you and I to conquer our rough spots, to conquer our sins, to conquer our anger, anger and uh, temptations, because we can call on the power of God to deliver us from that. And if down the road you get mad and you sin or whatever here's the consolation God gives you are not out of God's family because when you're in God's family you can't get out so what happens God is disappointed but in 1st John verse 1 chapter 1 excuse me and verse 9 it says this if we confess our sins God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So if you sin, tell God. He knows it anyway. Confess it to Him. Tell Him you're sorry and ask Him to forgive you and cleanse you. And that's the way you'll grow. Time after time, God will hear you and confess to Him. And here's another good scripture verse. I love this one. Philippians. That's kind of two, three books after Romans, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. In the middle of the New Testament, Philippians chapter 1, verse 6, says this, Be confident of this very thing, that he who hath begun a good work in you will perform it, perfect it, until the day of Jesus Christ. So the work that God began in your heart and life right now. He's going to develop that. He's going to help you. And both of us, you, God and I, He develops my life day by day. He strengthens me. He gives me courage to say no. He gives me the courage to stand, turn away when I should turn away. And He gives me courage to stand for Him. He'll do that for you. Be confident in this very thing. He that started the work, he's going to continue it. So it's God's work, and he's going to work it in your heart and your life. And when we trust Jesus Christ as our Savior, the Scripture said his Spirit comes to dwell in us, to live in us. Our bodies are a temple of God's Spirit. It makes us his. It makes us wholly his in his family. So his Spirit bears witness with our spirit. And when we sin, we have a conscience that tells you, uh-oh, that, that wasn't right. We can confess that, and God will cleanse us from that. 
One time, when I stopped for gas at a gas station, I had to wait till the cars pulled away from the gas pump, and then it was my turn. I pulled up, and before I got out of my truck to go to the pump, a fellow with some gas cans walked up to my pump. He took the pump that I should have had, and he was going to fill his gas cans. And I wanted to get angry. That's my pump. I waited for that. And I said, Lord Jesus, help me to glorify you right now. Under my breath, I prayed to God. And immediately, that anger left. And I said to the fellow, it looks like you have a lot of work cut out for you. And he said, I certainly do. He was so happy. Pleasant fellow. He didn't realize what he'd done. And the conversation was so good, I just thanked God that he took that anger away. And we had a good conversation. I didn't damage the name of Christ, my testimony. It was good. Whenever I remember to do that, things work out. God comes on the scene immediately. He's right there. We have to activate his power. We have to call on his power. God, this is, this is too much for me. You've got to handle this, and he'll do it. He'll find out that God will handle everything. Tough jobs, small ones, big ones, he'll be there. Trust him every day. God, where can I show your glory to someone? Where can I talk to someone about you? Yeah, that's the way to do it. Day by day, moment by moment. Here's another brochure we'll send you, How to Break uh, Bad Habits, Breaking Bad Habits. If they're tough, it doesn't give all the bad habits, but it gives you the uh, formula for the challenge. You don't have to carry the heavy load of your burden of sin. There is hope, and it's found at the cross. Jesus died for your hope. He died for your bad habits. He died for your victory. He died so you could conquer those things. And I found it to be true. I can attest to that. And uh, there's other thoughts in here how to apply God's Word and God's power to your habits. And you can overcome them, your habits, by the power of God. Another thing we'll send you is a Gospel of John. In the book of John, and it's a lot of the verses we use. And you'll be able to read them for yourself if you don't have a testament, a Bible, or a Gospel of John. This is a good place to start reading. When you open this up, you can start at the front. This is the Gospel of John is God's love letter to his people. So it's very good to start reading here. And whenever you open this up or open your Bible, say a prayer to God. God, help me understand what I'm reading. You may not read much. You may read a little. You may go back and reread it and understand what you've read. It's just a great study, you and God. Some of the bigger Bibles have concordance in the back. They have words in the back, and you can turn to the scriptures that the Word says so, and that will help you to grow. If you have a subject you're following, you want to know something about a certain subject in the Bible, you can go to the back of a study Bible. Maybe you want to get a study Bible and study God's Word. But grow in God's Word. Pray every day. Talk to God. Communicate with Him. He loves to hear your voice. It don't matter what you tell Him. Tell Him your joys. Tell Him your sorrows. Tell Him your heartaches. Tell Him everything. Tell Him you had a good day, a rough day. Good morning, God. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Oh, you can never say that enough. <laughs> You'll thank Him every day for saving your soul. And when you get to heaven and people are there that you introduce to Jesus, they'll thank you for inviting them to heaven. Share what Jesus did for you. Share it through these brochures that will send you right for help from uh, the website you're on. There's Bible studies on our website and there's information there that will be helpful and if we can help in any way we'll ha we're happy to do that you can contact us we'll give you helpful hints you can call for prayer log on for prayer requests we'll pray with you any way we can help you I'm so glad that you took the time to listen today to the great news that Jesus died for your sins and you can know for sure 
that you can go to heaven. Oh, my goodness. My goodness, friends, you won't know till eternity what value this has meant to you. None of us will. Because there's another side to God. He's a loving God. He's not willing that anybody should go to hell. That's why he sent his son to die on the cross. That is love, undescribable love. But there's another side to God. There's a wrath that God has to deal with because of sin. And in John chapter 3, verse 36 says this, He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God shall not see life. And watch this, the wrath of God abides on him. Wow. Why? Because he rejected the Savior. Oh my goodness. Another verse we said about John 3, 16, John 3, 18, two verses further down says this, He that believeth is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. We're already on the road to hell because we're sinners. That's not a choice. We're already on that road. But my friend, you trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior. That changed that. You're on the road to heaven now. You're on the road to victory. So remember, if you ever doubt what you did today by trusting Jesus Christ as your Savior, remember, it's not what you did. It's what Jesus did. You trusted in Jesus Christ to save you. By faith, you trusted in Him. But oh, my friend, Jesus is the one that saved you. He's the one that gave you eternal life. And it's His power that saved you. It's His power that's going to keep you. It's His power that's going to come for you someday. And it's what He did. And it's His power and His might that will keep you going, keep you saved. Yes. And when disappointments come, go to God in prayer. Don't, don't carry your burdens. Take them to the Lord. Ask Him for strength. Ask Him to protect you, ask him whatever you need. You don't need to listen to the enemy telling you things that aren't true. You go right to God. And when you think someone, the enemy's telling you, you're not saved. What did you do? You don't have to listen to him. You can tell him, Jesus Christ saved me by what? And I, he bought me with his blood. And you need to be gone. You need to let me alone. And he will do it. In Jesus' name, I command you to leave me alone. And tell God that you love him. Thank him for helping you. Thank him every day. Thank him in the morning. Thank him in the evening. Tell someone about him. I wish I had more time to talk to him. Maybe I'll talk again. When you talk too long, sometimes you get tired of listening. And you're probably tired of me talking. So maybe I'll talk on another subject sometime of uh, God's love and uh, what he went through and uh, how he's coming again. So as they say, you've heard this already, here, there, or in the air. <laughs> We're going to meet again. I never met you. But someday I trust I will when we meet in glory because of Jesus Christ and his saving grace. Praise his holy name. I'm going to pray for you right now and then I'll close the video. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you. I thank you, Father, for being God. I thank you for your holiness. I thank you for your faithfulness. I thank you for your rich justice. I thank you, Father, for your healing power. I thank you for your peace. I thank you for protection. I thank you, God, for everything that you are. Everything that you've been to me and to millions of other people. You are so great. What a wonderful God you are. I honor you. I praise your name, Father. 
And Father, I come to you in behalf of those who will watch this video and trust you as Savior. Father, I pray that the, under, the eyes of their understanding will be open and they will hear and know what you're trying to say to them. And they will, you will give them the power to believe that. You will give them the courage to accept that, to accept the Lord Jesus as their Savior. Father, I thank you for that. I commit every ear, every person to you that has listened to this gospel message. And I pray, Father, that it will not be one turn away without receiving the Lord Jesus as their Savior by simple faith. Let them know, Father, there is not a sin too big to greet that you can't save. There's not a sin too small that you don't know about. There's not too many sins that you can't forgive. Let them know, Father, if you couldn't forgive them, you wouldn't be God. You would have a restriction on you. Let them know, Father, that you can forgive anything, anytime, in their hearts and lives, and you can save them, and will save them. Give them that assurance, Father, right now that they trusted you as their Savior. No matter what religion they have, what belief they have, they put their faith and trust are fresh and new in Jesus Christ and Him alone. We know you said on the cross, Lord Jesus, it is finished. The plan of redemption is finished. We know we can't add anything to that. We can't add a thing to something that is finished. And I thank you, Father, for completing your great plan of salvation. And I give you praise and thanks from a grateful heart. And I commit everyone that sees us on video, wherever that may be, I commit them to you. And I pray, Father, you will bless them with every spiritual blessing. Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. God bless you, and thanks for listening.